You know that sound you make? Is that with like a is that like a distortion pedal? What kind of pedals do you use? <laughs> Good evening everybody, in our previous video we took an extensive look at the history of Buckethead's guitars. So today we'll take a run through of the numerous effects, pedals and equipment that Buckethead has used throughout his illustrious career. Woo! We begin with one of Buckethead's oldest pieces of equipment, the Alesis Midiverb 2. Released in the mid-1980s, Buckethead has owned and used the Alesis from as early as 1989 all the way up to his most recent 2019 tour. Buckethead has used the Alesis in the studio as well as live for such classics as Big Sur Moon, Soothsayer, Interworld and tons more. seen in photographs and live recordings, Buckethead uses the 99th preset of the Alesis with the default set at a 4 second delay. And whilst he has used other similar pedals, such as the Boss DD7 and more recently the DD3, which can often be seen sitting on top of the Alesis, the Alesis has always been his go-to reverb and delay of choice. 30 years of Buckethead and the Alesis MIDI verb. Excellent. Next up we're going old school looking at young Buckethead and his classic Rockman combo. The, the Rockman, is it, is it MIDI? In the late 1980s Buckethead purchased the Rockman XP100 amp, Rockman pedal board and later on the Rocktron in Telefax. He can be seen using the amp and pedal board primarily throughout his Delhi Creeps days and occasionally for shows right up to 1997. And because this video is more about effects, we'll focus on the Rocktron in Telefax. Released in 1992, the Rocktron, similar to the Alesis, was primarily a delay and reverb unit, although Buckethead seemed to use it more for its pitch shift function and 8 voice chorus. Buckethead spoke about the unit in a 1992 article for Guitar Player magazine, stating that he generates his trademark semitone clusters by stacking up minor seconds using the pitch shift function on the Rocktron. You know? As for why Buckethead chose the Rockman combo, well, maybe he saw this ad and thought it was just meant to be. Yep, the Rockman XP100. Another one just hatched. A little bit of history, a little bit of history. All right. Next up, Buckethead's three slabs of doom. The Boss FC2 Hyperfuzz, the MXR Phase 90 and the Digitech Bass Synth Wah. The three slabs debuted in 2016 when Buckethead returned to touring after an almost four year hiatus. As each of their respective names suggest, Hyperfuzz is used for fuzz and boost. The MXR Phase 90 is used to get that classic Led Zeppelin style phaser effect and the bass synth wah acts as a funky style envelope filter that Buckethead often uses to get those funky style growls. In 2019, Buckethead seemingly dropped the MXR Phase 90 from his setup, now using just the bass synth wah and hyperfuzz pedals. Two slabs of doom. Fuck yeah. <laughs> hmm. 
How, how'd you get that sound? Do you, do you get it with like a, a crybaby? Next up, the Electro Harmonics Micro Synthesizer. A similar sounding unit to the Moog synthesizers famously used by Praxis legend Bernie Worrell, Buckethead used the unit primarily during the early 2000s. Notably on the Axiology album where producer Travis Dickerson said it was used extensively. And on the Vigo Mortensen collaboration album Pandemonium from America. It's also very likely that Buckethead has used the unit to create the ambient swells and effects heard throughout his Death Cube K albums and other ambient releases. Next up is a piece of equipment that's a mainstay on Buckethead and just about every other guitarist pedal board, the Digitech Whammy. Used to raise and lower octaves, Buckethead primarily uses the two octaves upsetting and has done effectively for almost two decades. He's used different generations of the pedal but his go-to is always the Whammy 4. From classic songs like Jordan to King James, the Whammy pedal can be heard on so many albums and during live shows that it's become as much a part of Buckethead as the Mascom Bucket. That makes a boogie, is it a uh, 400 watts? Next up, two units that were known to be used by Buckethead during recording for the classic supergroup Praxis. In a 1992 article for Guitar Player magazine, Buckethead stated that producer, bassist and Praxis founder Bill Laswell convinced him to record into a Marshall amp, sometimes using a Proco Rack Distortion pedal for the classic album Transmutation. Buckethead also stated in a 1996 interview with Guitar Player magazine that the super heavy tones on Praxis' Sacrifice album were recorded direct through a zoom multi-effector. And although it doesn't say which zoom model was used, based on the year the album was released it was very likely one of these. Next up is a simple yet highly effective effect that every Buckethead fan knows and loves and every new Buckethead fan wants to know about. The Kill Switch. The red arcade style kill switch button is used to instantly cut the volume of the guitar giving it a cool choppy sounding effect that we've all come to know and love. Whilst the kill switch or toggle effect is more commonly known through Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine, it's fair to say that Buckethead has taken the effect, made it his own and ran away with it. The kill switch became so synonymous with Buckethead that Gibson eventually made a signature series Les Paul in 2009, with the kill switch being its main selling point. Fuck yeah. Before we get to the final effects pedal used by Buckethead, here's a brief rundown of some of the other units he's known to have used, albeit less frequently throughout his career. A Snarling Dog's Mole Sport, surprisingly not the Bootsy Collins model, a Line 6 POD similar to the earlier Zoom FX pedals, a Boss SE50 similar to the previously mentioned Rocktron unit, a mid-90s Lexicon Jam Man for looping, 
Wah pedals, of course, notably a Crybaby GCB95 and Vox V847, an amp farm plugin for Pro Tools on Cobra Strike Thanatopsis and Deli Creeps albums, a MacBook for backing tracks during live shows, and a Line 6 G30 wireless pack to prevent things like this. And speaking of Line 6, last but not least is an effects unit that every guitarist who wants to sound Buckethead-esque should own. It's the purple Line 6 FM4 filter modular. If you've ever googled or posted something in a forum along the lines of what effect is Buckethead using, more than likely, it's the FM4. Whether it's laser beams, popping, growls, swells, weirdness, it's probably coming from the FM4. Buckethead loves this pedal, and you can pretty much call it the Pike Album pedal, as he's used it extensively during his Pike Album series. During live shows, Buckethead has also used the green Line 6 DL4 and the MM4 units, but seems to have dropped them during his latest 2019 tour, sticking with just the FM4. Good choice. Along with the kill switch and whammy pedal, it seems the Line 6 FM4 will be a mainstay in Buckethead's rig for many years to come. So, as always, exciting times ahead.